Hey, this is John with Aperture Digital, and today we're going to look at Bricks Builder and the sticky header on scroll. So Bricks has a neat little function here that allows you to control what happens to the header when the user scrolls up or down. In this example, we're going to look at a two-row header uh, because you have to add a bit of custom CSS to show and hide the two-row header a little bit differently than if it's just a single row header. So let's take a look quickly on what's going on. So when you scroll down, both uh, rows are hidden. When you scroll up, the bottom row comes back into view. And then at the very top of the page, both rows come into view. So in order to get this type of uh, layout and functionality to work with the Bricks header template, what you need to do is understand what's happening inside the DOM with the Bricks header uh, sticky JavaScript. So right click on the page and hit inspect. And then we're gonna try to find our header. So right here's our header. And you can see we've got our two rows here. So when the page is loaded, there are two classes on the header uh, by default and that's sticky and on scroll. And then when the user starts interacting with the page and scrolling, the header classes change. So when you're all the way to the top, you have one set of classes, and then when you start scrolling, you have a different set of classes. So when you're scrolling down, you'll see two new classes added called scrolling and slide up. And then when you're scrolling up, but not at the very top of the page, you'll see you've got the three classes here, sticky, on scroll, and scrolling. So for everybody that just wants to see the CSS and how it works, here it is we're going to be looking at the class scrolling and then hitting our custom CSS inside the builder and doing a translate Y negative 45 uh, pixels or this value right here is whatever the height of your top row. So height of the top row. So I have this at the desktop breakpoint for the top and bottom rows. And then at the mobile landscape breakpoint, I hide the top row here and just have the single row. So it looks something like this. So at this breakpoint, I want to translate Y zero pixels for this uh, bottom row here. And I'm using translate Y to move everything in the Y uh, plane up negative 45 pixels or whatever your height is. Uh, when we hide that top row at this breakpoint, we don't need to bump this up anymore. So we just need to cancel that out and say, hey, don't do that at this uh, breakpoint here. So that's the answer for anybody that wants to just jump ahead and, and try to get this rolling on your sites. Uh, but let's go and look at this in more detail. So one last time, the header has sticky and on scroll. And then when you start scrolling down, you have two new classes called scrolling and slide up. So that scrolling class is really what we're hitting here. So we're looking for scrolling. And then the root uh, class here, which is going to be this class header for double underscore section top, for the top row and header for double underscore section bottom for the bottom row. So scrolling is the class we're using to find the header and then drilling down to the children of that header by targeting uh, their selectors below. And Bricks does that in the custom CSS using root. So we'll look more closely at that in the builder. So inside the builder, when you're in a header template, so this template has been defined as a header template. You can hover over the header and find header settings. So to turn on sticky header, you can come over here and toggle this on and then sticky on scroll and then have a slide up after so many pixels. So if you wanted it to not slide up for 500 pixels, you could do that see what that looks like. So we'll start scrolling down and this top one 
will slide up, but this bottom one will stay for 500 pixels and then it will slide up. So that's what that parameter means. If you hit zero, that means it's always going to be present um, if you wanted it to always be present. So let me make sure I'm refreshed here and I'm setting it to zero and it should always stay in view. So you can kind of tinker around with those settings. I'm going to set it to one pixel here so it automatically slides as soon as we start scrolling. So one pixel means it's just going to slide as soon as the user scrolls. I'm not going to go over all the styles here. I'm just going to go over what's required to make this work. So I've got two sections here and each section has a class and that's header for double underscore section top and the same for the bottom. So add your classes, whatever you want to call them for the top section and the bottom section. And then we're not targeting anything else but these sections uh, for this example. So for header top, you have to do two things and that's define your uh, height. So in this case, I'm using 45 pixels. You could do something different. And then you need to take that height and slide down here to your custom CSS and drop in what we had on our notepad here. That's a little bit bigger so you can see it. Uh, scrolling, which is the class being controlled by the JavaScript on the header tag and then root which is going to target uh, it's just a quick way of of saying whatever this class is um, you don't have to type it all out here and then we're going to transform and translate y the height of that top row on the bottom the layout is max height 110 so there's no defined height here, uh, just a max height. And also the CSS is the same for this custom CSS, which is just the height of that top row. I can't stress how important that is here. And that's really all you need to do uh, to get this effect to work. All right, so next I wanna try to break some of this and see what happens if maybe we forget to add uh, the translate y, uh, the height of this top row, and, and what that would do to our layout. So let's jump back into the builder here, and on the bottom row, let's just take away the custom CSS, hit save, and see what happens. So now we aren't moving it up by 45 pixels, so you'll notice this gap here. So that's all the CSS is really doing. The hard part was finding uh, what the JavaScript is adding or removing uh, from the DOM and then trying to target it. So scrolling is that really key class that Brix is adding. And then we just need to piggyback onto that and say, let's move this up negative 45 pixels. So that's what happens if you take that away. So let's put that one back. And then at the mobile landscape breakpoint, we don't slide it up, and that's because this header top row is set to display none. So I just hit everything in there just to have a single row header at this breakpoint. So on the bottom row, uh, if we take away that custom CSS, which is translate Y zero pixels, see what happens on the front end. So let's refresh, inspect the page, and then resize the page so that that top row goes away. And what you'll notice is we don't need to bump it up 45 pixels because that other uh, row is gone. So now it's like half covered up. Let's look at this in a private window here. So without the admin bar, it's still um, moving up when it doesn't need to. So that's what that uh, reset is doing 
uh, at this break point. So we'll paste. Uh oh. Do see if I can get my CSS back. Oh well. Just go grab it from here. Copy that. Zero pixels. All right. So now we're back. Good again. Everything's looking great. And that's really all you need to do uh, to get this effect to work. Um, I don't think it's going to work with three rows. A three row header uh, would probably need some additional CSS, which I have not explored yet. I haven't needed to do that. So let's just test it out real quick. So if we add another row here, you'll see that when we scroll down, it's hiding the top row, but not uh, anything below uh, that top row. So what I think the JavaScript is doing here is saying, hey, this top piece here, let's hide it. And you can kind of see that that's what's happened. Um, when we scroll down, it hides that top row, but not anything underneath it. So it doesn't, doesn't really matter. I haven't done anything in the builder to say these uh, elements here or containers here will uh, be different than this one. I think Bricks' JavaScript is doing that on its own. So uh, we'd probably need to target some children with CSS to say, hey, maybe we want to hide the top one and the bottom one, but not the middle one, or maybe the very last one, the last child. Um, so we could definitely do it. It would just take some more in-depth CSS work. So for this example, it's only going to work with a two-row header. Uh, same goes with the top row. Uh, if, if we were to duplicate that one, it would be the same exact uh, result. So uh, that's really it. That's all I have to show you here. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, drop them in the comments, or I'm on Facebook uh, under the handle John Aperture. Um, if you get stuck, I'll try to do anything I can to help you move forward. I appreciate you watching and uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. See you later.